These books will change your view of the world. As crazy as the world is these days, it's additionally packed with happiness, excellent news, and a bright future. Are you a doubter? Are you perpetually petrified of what the future holds and you dwell within the negative side of it? Guess what? I bring you excellent news as this video will take you through five books that will change your view concerning the planet and lift your optimism level. Through this video, you will get the summary of these highly recommended books and it will serve as a guide when you are reading through the book. Number one, Abundance, The Future is Better Than You Think by Peter H. Diamandis and Stephen Kotler is referred to as a heavy dose of optimism, written persuasively and backed up by exhaustive research by the authors to make you see and believe that mankind's future might not be as bleak as we tend to worry. This video will show you ways to rise, meet and overcome humanity's greatest challenge, that is providing abundance and gives insight about how four forces, the techno-philanthropists, exponential technologies, the do-it-yourself innovator, and the rising billions are coming together to give us plenty of reasons for optimism, using this book as a guide. So follow through. Abundance, the future is better than you think, describes a future where folks can have access to all or any primary basic needs required for a first world standard through technological innovations. Abundance was profiled in Time Magazine, The Washington Post, and also The Wall Street Journal. Each chapter of this book was written to prove wrong the conventional belief that humanity has been dealing with since the dawn of time. That is, the gap between the privileged few who have lived in stark contrast to the hard scrabble few cannot be closed. The book was published in 2012, comprises 19 chapters with 400 pages in total. The book is split into six parts, perspective, exponential technologies, building the bottom of the pyramid, and steering quicker. This book points out ways to be optimistic. Forget the news and your amygdala. Ignore the news, the bad headlines. Instead, look at some statistics and you will see that the world has never been a better, safer place to live happily and abundantly. Quiet your amygdala. If we were to forego our television addiction for just one year, the world would have over a trillion hours of cognitive surplus to commit to sharing projects. The world's biggest problem will be solved simultaneously. The true measure of something's worth is the hours it takes to acquire it. Abundance is not about providing everyone on this planet with a life of luxury. Rather, it's about providing all with a life of possibility. The world wasn't created in a day. Likewise, the many complex problems we face today didn't just occur at once. Everything will be solved simultaneously with each helping the other out. Eradicating malaria won't only mean better health for African countries, but also improve their economy as the place will be a lot safer for tourists. Instead of thinking outside the box, think inside the right box with a good mindset. Nobody wants to fail on purpose, but that doesn't mean you should stop trying when what you are doing is great and important. Retrace your steps and try different approaches. Technology is a resource liberating mechanism. It can make the once scarce, the now abundant. Culture is the ability to store, exchange, and improve ideas. Peter H. Diamandis. Number two, As a Man Thinketh by James Allen, a British philosopher. This bestseller by James Allen a renowned British philosopher, argues that the key to mastering your life is harnessing the facility and ability of your thoughts and helps you to cultivate the philosophy and angle of a positive, excellent, and successful person. This video will take you through the necessary steps needed to activate and ignite your mind to be the positive thinking factory needed for a positive and excellent life using this book as a guide. The book is a less than 50 pages long essay and self-help book, published in the year 1903, which can easily fit into your pocket. There are three great things to learn from this book, and this will help us to summarize the book in general. 
Our thoughts create our world. A man cannot directly choose his circumstances, but he can choose his thoughts, and so indirectly, yet surely, shape his circumstances. Thoughts don't seem to be secret and ineffective. They direct and form our lives deeply. Thoughts are like seeds within the garden of our mind. We have a tendency to nurture the useful thoughts and get rid of the harmful ones. Many people believe their inner thoughts are secret and ineffective. James Allen holds the alternative view to promote or destroy our health. If we tend to enable too many thoughts associated with pleasure-seeking, indulgence, and idleness, then we tend to slowly bend our lives into the direction of unhealthiness, despite what our outer explicit goals are. He says our thoughts form and direct our lives in powerful and unimaginable ways than we expect. Our way of thinking determines our outcome. Our desires direct the world we create around us. You will always gravitate towards that which you secretly most love. Our thoughts and wishes direct our attention, and the direction of our attention forms and dictate our world. Just like how innovators like Steve Jobs learn that opportunities and chance surround us when one learns how to see them, our thoughts even affect our physical health. Anxiety quickly demoralizes the whole body and lays it open to the entrance of disease. Long-term exposure to fret chemicals will increase your risk of high vital signs and polygenic disorder, and it saps your system, making you a lot more prone to illness and infection. Thus, James Allen was right regarding anxiety demoralizing the body and making us prone to sickness. Number three, Think Like a Freak by Stephen Levitt and Stephen Dubner, the author of Freakonomics Offer to Retrain Your Brain. The book is considered one of the greatest books ever written that helps to position your mind to make excellent and positive decisions, thinking unconventionally and creatively, urging readers to think behind the curtain to see why people behave the way they do. Each chapter of the book was written to teach us about the attitudes needed to be taken to counter the tricks and the problems the world throws at us. You don't have to stress yourself because this video is packed with information on how to activate and power your mind to its full potential using this book as a guide. The book is a non-fictional 336 pages long book published on March 20 of the year 2007. The best grasp from this book include be proud and honest of the little you know, do not be afraid to use the word I don't know. It has long been said that the three hardest words to say in the English language are I love you. We heartily disagree. For most people, it is much harder to say I don't know. Stephen D. Levitt. Having an excessive amount of confidence in one thing you don't actually have great knowledge of can cause you to fall. Admitting simply I don't know presents your most real self to people. The book explains the importance of asking the right questions to gain information on a situation. By asking the wrong questions, it's unlikely to induce the solution one is seeking to get. If it takes a lot of courage to admit you don't know all the answers, just imagine how hard it is to admit you don't even know the right question. The book gives insight and explains the concept of thinking like a child. Children know as little as their age allows, meaning their mind is always active, always learning new things by asking questions and figuring things out beyond that's just how things are. Knowing what fuels a person's actions can be used to your own advantage. Figure out what people really care about, not what they say they care about. Number four, Stumbling on Happiness by Dan Gilbert is a New York Times bestseller that was awarded the Royal Society Prizes for Science Books in 2007. The book brings to life research in a scientific discipline, neuroscience, philosophy, and activity political economy. Find out why this book is so rated and considered the best guide to predict the happy and great future we so much desire as you go through this video. The book is a non-fictional 336 pages long book published on March 20 of the year 2007. Summary. The ability to think and envision a great future. What makes humans completely different from each alternative animal is that they believe in the long run or future. Our brain makes predictions improbably quickly concerning nearly everything in life. Once our experiences do not match what our brain expects, 
we have a tendency to feel stunned. The brain is liable for designing and anxiety, two key future-oriented functions. Our brain is what permits us to be the sole animal that experiences and envisions the future as we have a tendency to do. If we do not have the chance to predict our future, it's a lot scarier than if we can predict a dangerous future. Variable shock study. One of the central wants of humans is to regulate things. Enacting management over your own life could be a supply of delight. Imagination's three shortcomings are, imagination tends to feature and take away details. However, folks don't notice that key details could also be unreal or missing from the unreal situation. And visions, futures, and pasts are just like the present than how they really will be or were. Imagination fails to comprehend that things can feel completely different once they really happen. Most notably, the psychological system can build dangerous things that feel not as dangerous as they are imagined to be. The pursuit of happiness is made into a terrible definition of need. They solely assume they're happy as a result of not grasping what they're missing. That's really the purpose. Not knowing what we are missing is the main thing that enables us to be happy despite not having another chance. The fact that we often judge the pleasure of an experience by its ending can cause us to make some curious choices. Number five, evolutions through centuries have made the world a better place for us all through series of inventions and technologies right from the onset of humanity till this moment. Stress no further because here today through this video, I bring you the book, How We Got to Now, Six Innovations That Made the Modern World by Steven Johnson. This is a highly profiled book by the New York Times and Los Angeles Times, which will show you the great importance of evolution. Bill Clinton describes the author as a great science writer. Watch this video and tap from the knowledge like other great people did. The book was republished in the year 2014. It is made up of 304 pages in total. The six innovations he discussed are glass, cold, sound, clean, time, and light. The march of technology expands the space of possibility around us, but how we explore that space is up to us, Stephen Johnson. The book helps us see a world we generally take for granted with fresh eyes and we appreciate it better. The book highlights a series of inventions that made the world easier for us. Examples are self-driving cars, gene therapy, and the use of drones. Stephen Johnson stressed that we need a value system to decide which strains of innovation to encourage and which ones to discourage. The larger question is, as virologist Jonas Salk once asked, are we being good ancestors? I hope with this video I have been able to influence your perspective of the world in a positive way.